between Amber and I, this is our passion. As coaches, you know, we are really delighted to be bringing various themes and topics um, to you as purpose-driven professionals uh, in a way that, you know, helps, you know, provide guidance and direction and may even illuminate and have you have breakthroughs and ahas because it's all about living a purpose-driven life. That's really what it's all about. Yeah. And any way that we can help facilitate that, trust me, we're all on it. So welcome and thank you. Yes. So today we're going to talk about side gigs, getting your side gig started. And of course, it's going to have a side of purpose because as Michelle said, we are purpose driven professionals and we find lots of value in purpose as a part of our why and what drives us and makes us passionate about what we do. And we truly believe that that's the secret ingredient. And we'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, I want to just acknowledge some of what folks have put in the chat before we get started. We have side hustles as virtual assistants. We have side hustles as wellness companies. Um, we have a desire to learn and how to market services better and grow, grow client base. Um, we have uh, someone whose side hustle is on organizing, holistic organizing practitioner and vision career strategist. When we have an HR info systems platform support as a side hustle. So just to give you some context of other folks who are with us uh, now live on Zoom and what some of their side hustles are and what they desire to get out of this session. So we're going to be talking about side hustles, the why, the what, and the how. That's what we're gonna get into today. Michelle's gonna kick us off, but I just wanna share a couple statistics with you that we found very interesting before we get into the why. 70 million, 70 million, that's 45% of working Americans report having a side hustle. That amounts to roughly 70 million people. 27% of side hustlers rely on that income to cover their monthly bills. This was exciting to me. These were exciting statistics that, you know, people, it turns out as like a little passion project, but then it actually turns into something big enough that you can use to pay monthly bills. Um, the distance around the earth is a typo. Pardon me, I did not change that. We're gonna ignore that and I'll tell you what that one should be. 27% of side hustlers rely on their income to cover their monthly bills. Sorry, I said that one too. So here, I have the rest of them here for you. Uh, there are 42% of Americans are optimistic about the future of their side hustle, especially in this day and age with all of the tools and systems that are available to us. And this one was surprising. Nearly one third of side hustlers are over 54 years old. So just a little context for you. <laughs> yeah, so and I, I want to add to that, that, you know, <clears throat> we're going through, as many of you read and watch on, on television, a mass resignation. You know, I think COVID for so many reasons, just kind of, you know, spinned us around and upside down and our lives just became unrecognizable. And by nature of how people perhaps were even feeling a level of discontent in what they were doing, um, wanted to be able to figure out not only how they could possibly supplement their income, but what they could be doing next. So, you know, and also, and I don't remember exactly the right statistics, but there is a, um, Enormous, enormous amount of increase in women in particular that are starting their own businesses. You know, entrepreneurship for the most part um, is, you know, growing exponentially. So now is the time, even if you want to just dip your little pinky toe into uh, becoming a, a side hustler, so to speak, or completely, you know, um, walk in the direction of doing something different. Now is the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love how you said, Michelle, dip your pinky toe in because I, I feel like what gets in our way a lot of times is feeling like we have to go all out, but you can just dip your pinky toe in. You There's the spectrum, right? You don't have to go from zero to a hundred. You can go to 10 and say, okay, that's comfortable for me. This is what fits into my lifestyle and my work. So Michelle's gonna gonna take us into kind of the why. We'll get we'll get started in that and then have more conversation, but I'll be quiet for now and pass the mic. <laughs> Yeah. No, we don't want you quiet. Chime in at any time. All right. So what Amber was sharing is that, you know, we're going to be looking at the why, the what, and the how. And to the best of our ability, you know, help any of you who are right on the precipice of trying to figure out, well, you know what, I think I kind of want to do a side hustle for whatever the reason and what is it that I need to do first or for those that are in it, 
you know, we'll get into as much detail as we can and what uh, time allows to kind of, you know, uh, have you firmly planted on what's next. So let's dive into the why. So, <clears throat> you know, this is all about sort of exploration and discovery in terms of trying to determine how, I've got to move, there we go. What or why, what's my why? You know, Simon Sinek is an author of these great books and his, his one book, is entitled Start With The Why. So you want to really understand what motivates you and what are your passions. Because when we think about a side gig or a side hustle, um, it's, it's really much more beneficial and purposeful when it's anchored and grounded in what your passions or your gifts may be and really what motivates you. Uh, especially, you know, if this is your five to nine, uh, trying to figure out, you know, what motivates you and what your passions are will point you in the right direction. And I love this quote by an author, Victor Stretcher, living for what matters most changes everything. Living for what matters most changes everything. And, and there is the hope that perhaps, you know, your nine to five is offering you that sense of purpose. And it's something that my niece and I talk about all the time. So many of us, well, not Amber and I, because we're living our purpose, but so many individuals are dedicating their time in their current five, uh, nine to five, you know, doing what they majored in, um, whatever their career span, and it's because of the compensation and a lifestyle, but it's really not satisfying. And sometimes having a side gig it could be because I want to really express myself, my creativity. I want to get that level of satisfaction that I may not be deriving from my uh, day job and being able to do a side hustle. Again, that's going to generate some income is great, but if it also feeds and fuels your passion, then this is how we kind of balance out our energy. So, you know, the next three slides sort of hone in on you know, the rationale that so many uh, individuals have uh, in terms of, you know, what their mindset is. And the first of these three is a job mindset. And if you're within a job mindset, you are working for the money and you are kind of contained within your time at work. Meaning, you know what? I clock in at eight, I clock out at six. Maybe it's a little different because so many of us now are working from home and remotely. So, you know, having that um, expanded work day, but it's really about, you know what? I'm gonna separate my personal life and my interest from what I do um, when I'm working. So it's, they really kind of contain or limit their time at work. And sometimes having that job mindset is, I tend to be dissatisfied. It's a paycheck, you know, is often the quote that's used. Um, and unfortunately, they find little meaning to what they're doing, and they're generally looking for something new, right? So if this sort of resonates with any of you here, this is where beginning to think about creating a side hustle and a side gig will help sort of balance out. It doesn't necessarily mean that you want to jump ship and um, uh, leave your job tomorrow because their responsibilities and bills and mortgages have to be paid. But again, a side gig can, can help you kind of get more into um, that purpose driven um, uh, frame of mind. And as and Michelle that, goes oh, through these, uh, pardon me, I just want to invite everyone as you go through these, Michelle, to think about yourselves and to identify, um, she's going to explain the distinctions between the job career uh, and, and more of a passionate uh, purpose driven mindset and just think of which applies to you so that you can be honest with yourself and aware of what drives you and what some of your values are as well. Exactly. So the career mindset, you know, is where you are working for advancement, pay or prestige. You know, you're looking for your position to kind of, you know, provide that type of return on investment. And it widely differs in levels of happiness and satisfaction. There may be a bit of a, a, um, a divide or a chasm. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, I, I'm compensated well. Um, I've got a nice title. And at the end of the day, though, I'm really not happy and satisfied. I'm not going to go off on a tangent, but I will say that prior to starting my coaching practice 16 years ago, this was me. 
I was a seasoned and senior leader within a global organization. I had achieved what one would consider by society's definition, you know, status and success, but my heart was depleted. I was not really happy or fulfilled, right? So, you know, I was in a career, would have very inspiring and interesting cocktail conversation, but at the end of the day, I knew that there was more out there. So, you know, this is what caused me to become a coach and start um, that as my side gig until I jumped into it um, uh, with, with uh, all feet and, feet and hands. So the third is they're happy if they think they're winning, right? So sometimes, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a competitive thing that we have when we're sort of in our career. We're looking to the left, we're looking to the right, we're looking to see what our colleagues are doing, we're looking to see what our college um, classmates are doing. And it's, yeah, well, you know, if I'm winning because I am achieving certain accolades and positions within my career, um, that is enough of a reward. But unfortunately, that can be oftentimes depleting. Can be concerned that they're not advancing at the pace that they want or that they're not in the role that they really deserve or desire. And while not entirely dissatisfied, they often wonder whether or not they're being treated fairly or if there's something better. So again, it's, it's not living a, um, a purpose-driven career, but again, you know, ask yourself if any of these descriptions sort of suit you, because if it is, not to say you need to jump ship, but that light bulb might go off to say there may be something more and maybe identifying what my side gig, side hustle could be, could move me in a direction of now my calling, right? This is honestly, ultimately what we as spiritual beings having a human experience want to do, where we see our work as a positive end in and of itself. And honestly, they say, when you do what you love, certainly the money will come, but there's such a level of satisfaction, even when there are bumpy roads, even when there may be limited um, revenue coming in, because when you're living life on purpose, it just takes on technicolor. You feel good about what you're doing. You give more to your work. Um, you get more involved um, in the work that you're doing. And you're not only happy and fulfilled, but you're also very successful. And again, we wanna underscore, let us not be distracted by how society defines success, by external, you know, what car I'm driving, what status, what's my lifestyle. I mean, all those things are a part of it. But when we are moving in the direction of serving others and serving a higher power and a higher purpose, that is truly um, the definition of success. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, it's how we have served and how we make people feel as opposed to, you know, the money, because we can't take it with us. That's our soul's growth sometimes bringing financial rewards, right? Well, we want it to be more than sometimes because you know whether a side hustle is just providing you um, supplemental and incremental um, uh, income, you know, ultimately, I don't know exactly what the statistics are, but it's very often that you know with, with a bit of time and effort and um, Amber's gonna talk a little bit about what goes into creating your side hustle, it can absolutely be the launch pad for doing something and starting you know, a nonprofit or a for-profit uh, on your own and working it as your nine to five. Yeah, Michelle, I'll just jump in too. And just to say that, you know, I, I've um, worked with some clients who have said, I wanna be passionate about my work, but I gotta pay my bills. And so I need to do something on the side that lets me express that passion, but that's not gonna be my main thing. And so my pushback is often, but what if that something on the side turns into your main thing, you know? And so when you may start something, not thinking about the financial benefit of it, it may be, you know, depending on what drives you, depending on what you need or what you're missing as we're going to ask these questions or what, you, what it is that you want to bring forth. Um, these things can serve us in different ways and that's not always financial. Sometimes it's that, you know, we're creative and we really have to find a way to express that creativity. And you don't, 
if, if it's the creativity that you value, you're not necessarily having to go in going, how much money am I going to make from this? You kind of surrender to that creativity and allow it to take its own form in whatever way it's supposed to. And then you definitely, you know, once you realize that this is what I want to do, you want to start getting into the money and the projections and how it's going to be something that's sustainable that you can continue to do. But I just wanted to, to highlight that, you know, that some of you may be joining us and going, there's no way that, um, you know, a side gig is something that that can turn into a main gig, but it really can. Like I, Michelle mentioned her coaching business. I started my Quartz Wellness Collective started on the side as I did my main business, which was in the pet industry. I had a pet apparel company and I just said, I can't do this anymore. It's not fulfilling to me. And I started this on the side and it grew and it grew and it's certainly become my main gig. So just to give a little background on how we can, uh, the unexpected can happen when we follow our passion, that things fall into place. That's how we know that the universe is supporting us and what we're doing, that things start lining up and we go, yeah, you know what, this is right. I should be put in leaning into this more. Yeah, yeah, no, you're so right. So this is an opportunity, you know, for us just for a minute or two to do a bit of reflection and ask, you know, questions um, relative to when you think about where you are, some of you made reference to um, being on the precipice of trying to figure out what your side hustle side gig is, and some of you have identified. Um, but what's missing? If you're in either of those camps, you know, reflect on, and certainly we want to hear from you, you can unmute, unmute. What's missing? And what do you desire to bring forth, right? Because we're at this why stage. So you know, this is where we want to maybe coach you and um, have you share uh, so that we can sort of help you have uh, an aha moment. What questions are you asking yourself in terms of what's missing? Maybe I haven't been able to identify what my side gig is, but I'm yearning to do something a bit more satisfying and fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Or I don't well, what's even... keeping you up at night? Is there anything that uh, is the thing that keeps you up at night and you've been telling yourself for years, I really got to do something with that, but not mm -hmm. quite leaned into it yet? Is anyone having mm -hmm. that experience as well? Well, um, I think sometimes, so often we hear about the fear of failure. Sometimes I wonder if it's a fear of success. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, what if I am really called to do this? What if I am, you know, regardless if there are 50 million coaches, maybe I should be a coach because everybody's always coming to me for advice, you know? So um, sometimes I, I wonder about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think the fear of success can be quite polarizing, right? Um, because the risk that it takes for us to start something or do something different uh, can be really daunting. Yeah, yeah. And gosh knows if we really have gotten feedback or get a sense based on industry trends that this could really blow up. It's like, wait a minute, you know, I'm not ready um, to kind of step out there and uh, make myself vulnerable. So yeah, that can definitely be something that's missing. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of that Marion Williamson quote. It's like, um, who am I to think that I am all of this? And then who am I not to? Uh, it's kind of the essence of that whole quote. And, and you know, so what you said reminds me of that, but I, I think if we go on a spiritual level that these things are given to us so that we do something with them. So if you're hearing that or you're feeling that, you're that's that's the universe, that's your little ping, your push to, to do something about it. Because when we're not expressing ourselves and our talents, we often feel repressed in ways and that can turn up as frustration or, or even physical disease because of the disease that we're experiencing mentally. So um, Amy, I, I saw you unmute and wanted to welcome you uh, and also welcome you to contribute if there's something that you wanted to say as well. Yeah, so thank you. So I, this was um, interesting to me, this topic, because, um, you know, I've often thought of having a side gig, but my issue is I, I don't know what that is. And, you know, I, I feel like it has to be something online. Um, I, I gravitate towards that. I'm, I'm into marketing. That's my, my day job. I've been doing it for more years than I'd like to say. So maybe like 30 plus years. And I'm good at it, um, but I just don't have the same thirst for it. I don't jump out of the bed in the morning like I used to. And I feel like 
you know, on this like second half of my career, I want to do something for me, you know, but that's my problem is identifying what that really is. Um, because there's, um, the passion doesn't come into play of anything that really jumps out for me, you know, and I know you have to have the passion because then comes, you know, everything else behind it. So that's a little bit I'm struggling with. Yeah. 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 So uh, let's have a conversation. Amy is one of my good friends. So uh, I know her well. And, and, you know, I think maybe even Pam, who's on the, on the call can, can attest to this. You mentioned two th things, you know, you've got experience about mar around marketing and you said it, it was what online in terms of how you bring that service um, I have it, you know, direct mail, I have online, I have social media. So I have all of that. So I'm thinking, you know, I, I want a business that, you know, is always moving and, and making money for me even when I sleep. So, mm -hmm. and I can jump in and jump out. So I know that platform, if you will. Mm -hmm. So what is, what's unclear to you? Because you sound really definitive about, you know, leveraging your marketing experience and expertise. Um, and yet sort of bringing it to the 21st century in terms of how to bring those messages to a consumer or an end user. And what's, what's still unclear with even those aspects being identified or defined? Yeah, so I guess the two things would be, one, I could um, act as a consultant or a coach and help others grow their business. But to me, I don't want to do that because I do that every day in my workplace. I do enjoy it, but I want to do, I want it to be my business. And, you know, my, I, you know, if I'm selling a product or selling something online or, um, you know, maybe I could start with helping other companies fast track their business, um, utilizing social media and online that they're not fully aware of. Um, enjoy mentoring. So maybe that would be something to start with. And then I could kind of morph into, you know, the next step, if you will. Mm -hmm. Can I jump in for a moment too? Yeah, of course. I, I just, as you say that, and then you said mentoring, and it's, it's, it's aligned with what I was thinking, Amy. Sometimes it's not the what, sometimes it's the who that gets us excited. And so being able to apply these skills and that you have to someone or someone's a group that you're passionate about helping or uplifting or changing or challenging or, you know, there's something about the, the who is it may be what pulls you to use your skills in a different way than how you've used them in the past and you mm -hmm. and, and even ignites a different uh, level of excitement about it because it's fresh because you're in a new space with the people and not just what it is that's your expertise. So just something to think about if maybe the mm. would excite you more than the what. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we want to you know leave you with um, maybe in your best interest to <clears throat> sort of write on paper, um, you know what what your what your non-negotiables are, what it is that you don't want to do, and what it is that you do want to do. Um, and just by taking it out of your head and on paper can right. bring a bit of clarity and illuminate. Um, something may just be, you know, jump off the page. You just never know, but it's getting you out of your thoughts because sometimes we r ruminate on our thoughts and before we can even finish that thought, the ego is coming in saying, no, nah, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't feel good. But allow almost with what Amber said, just express yourself in terms of, um, you know, not only what the service might be, but who it might be uh, directed towards, you know, and don't, um, you know, naysay yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and let's have a conversation. Be more than happy to support you. Yep. Yep. Okay. So um, let's keep it going. Oh, anybody else want to share before we kind of move on what they see yeah. is missing? And this yeah. is Pam. Um, I, I can definitely identify with what Amy was saying um, about really not knowing my, my purpose, my passion. And um, I have to say, working with you, Michelle, has, has helped us to start to bring more clarity to that. And, and um, I, I understand the point about taking what you, what you have experience in even, and, and you know, there's not all the aspects of that are not necessarily something you want to carry forward, but looking at 
what are the things that you might be interested in, um, you know, further developing or exploring that, that also utilize some of what you know and what you've done and, and your current skill set. So as mine being in human resources, I recognize I don't want to be a full-flung human resources consultant with, you know, hiring and training and uh, all of the different ask benefits and all of that sort of thing, but then kind of breaking that down and looking at, well, what aspects of it would I like to explore and, and do a little, and, and continue to do? And so I identify that, you know, I enjoy sort of that um, technical support, um, but taking, putting, uh, gearing it towards um, human resources because that's where my career experience was. So, you know, just sort of taking, taking the sort of, I have to do these things and deal directly with people out of it and, and being more, looking at how can I be sort of back background support for human resources operations, you know, providing um, support for H H what they call H human resources information systems platforms. So it was, it's been a, like a real uh, process of exploring. And uh, frankly, for years and years, I felt like, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I mean, I'm, I was good at what I did, but it didn't necessarily bring me pat bring me you know fulfillment and so now that I'm retired I have an opportunity to take it in a direction that could provide me with um maybe a little bit more satisfaction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and anchoring that Pam um and just providing this to Amy as well as anybody else who uh can relate to uh the conundrum that you may be in it's that's where writing the list of you know what your negotiables are what your non-negotiables are uh because it's you know yep i like an aspect of marketing but i don't or what part of marketing do i enjoy and what don't i enjoy so just doing that brain dump uh can be very uh very helpful pause and sidebar that list applies to everything of negotiables and non-negotiables right mm -hmm. so if you're thinking of other areas of your life even relationships that negotiables and uh, or what's what you'll accept and what's non-negotiable is always a good practice mm-hmm Mm -hmm. Sidebar. Also, just want to mention, uh, Katrina has mentioned in the chat, a lot of small businesses and nonprofits need HR because they don't have a full set time staff person. They need help with updating policies and resource guides. Thank you for that, Katrina. Just want to make sure, Pam, that you heard that as well, because um, I think that was directed towards you when you were uh, mentioning your HR background. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is, again, just a bit of an exercise, you know, if you are pondering, you know, well, what is my flow? What is my, where, um, what is my passion? Understanding more about it um, can give you a clue into what, you know, your focus of your side gig and side hustle could be. Um, so we may not necessarily have time uh, to discuss your answers, but this is a practice and an exercise that, you know, you can sort of take forward. Fill in your passions and what the relationship may be to your purpose. So, you know, on the left column, it's what are your passions and where do you find flow? Meaning what pumps your heart? What is it that gives you a real sense of fulfillment and satisfaction? And then on the second column, it's then address the why. You know, why um, does it provide you that level of satisfaction? Because there's a lot in exercises like this that help us do a bit of excavation and exploration um, and go beneath the surface of, you know, kind of what our intellect um, and our experiences tell us. So, you know, we want to kind of gift you with um, those two questions to, again, get to the bottom of um, what your side gig might be and how to kind of kickstart it. So, so is this something someone wanted to say? Yeah. Hi, Michelle. Just... It's Joanna. Hey, Joanna. Hey, how are you? Good. Good. So good to see you. So I, I have a little question. So I guess I'm particularly blessed because I found my flow. So I don't think any of you know me, but obviously Michelle does. So I'm a yoga and meditation teacher and I'm so fulfilled in my life and my job. 
um, I, I just feel so blessed with the fact that I can do what I love. It doesn't exactly bring in a whole lot of money, um, but I, I live in a place of um, gratitude and I live um, in the present moment. So I'm wondering, what is my side gig? If, I ha if, I if my job is what I do and what I love and, and how I live, like what would my side gig be? Can I answer that only because I know you? Yeah. You are incredibly creative um, with your hobby of knitting mm. and crocheting. And that is what it's meditative for you. Yeah. So who's to say that, you know, um, that might be where, and uh, Amber's gonna go into that because this is how we can turn a hobby into our side gig. But, you know, it, it, what we're saying, let me just take three steps back. It, you don't have to have a side gig or a side hustle, right? Because if you are living your passion and that is where you're, you know, focusing maybe 100% of your time, so be it. This is only if there's some urging internally to want to be able to kind of expand and kind of do more. Uh, so I'm just offering the, the thought of your hobby where you are incredibly gifted in, you know, the things that you knit and crochet and it brings you such, such satisfaction and not to mention, you know, what you may uh, give to others as gifts that may be a side gig. Can I, I also, I want to offer something, Joanna, and it's relevant to the, the slide that we're looking at now. So it sounds like what you are doing currently has a answered these three top questions. What, what do you love? What are you good at? What does the world need from you? And what I hear you saying is that it doesn't necessarily pay a whole lot of money. And so maybe what can you get paid for is the question that you are left to ask yourself and do more uncovering with because you're doing what you love. And so sometimes our side gig may be something to do money, to make more money or bring more money in because we're already fulfilled in what our main gig is. And so, you know, if it's selling those those knitwares um, on Etsy, we have a list of 44 ideas, actually in an article we're gonna share with you guys in the next section. Um, but it may be that if value, if the value of money is something that is not being as fully uh, fulfilled in the first three questions that you've answered and what you're doing that you love, then then maybe that's something to explore in what areas you can uh, you can add or expand for financial gains. Okay, thanks. I just have to dash and get my grandson. He just woke up, so I'm gonna mute and I'll be right back. <laughs> hey, ladies, can I, can I add something, Michelle? Sure. So, um, Joanna, I was thinking since you um, love what you do and you get such passion and satisfaction from it, are, is there any way that you could expand your business since, you know, COVID and the pandemic, I think everybody's looking for a more stress-free life and, you know, are gone like online and do yoga and meditation and, and just reach more people. Um, and, and really, oh, she, she was her grandson. So cute. Um, you know, reach more people and um, kind of share her passion with people. And she has such a great platform now since everything is remote and online and, you know, she could be global versus just local. Absolutely, well said. I like you know, that. Marketing <laughs> consulting work at its best, <laughs> being able to, no, it's true. Just off the cuff, you were able to see that with what her primary um, nine to five is, there's ways in which it can be expanded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even just doing recorded classes that people can, you know, hop on anytime, day or night and download it or create an app and, you know, just really maximize, um, you know, her, her craft and, and any of her crafts, actually. So, yeah, um, yeah just food for thought. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And one last thing I want to add, um, you, you know, it does say, you know, what you can get paid for, but I just want to represence us to your side gig may not necessarily offer you incremental. It could just be what you love, what, what you're good at. Um, and for me, you know, I started a nonprofit back in 2011, um, you know, several years into starting the practice. But, you know, I had a passion for wanting to help um, women become empowered. So, you know, my nonprofit, the the money that we generate from our events, et cetera, I just donate it. Um, you know, I just wanted to also be philanthropic. So I'm not pocketing the proceeds, but you know, I'm uh, 
um, committing to, you know, making contributions and uh, doing some fundraising. So again, that's my side gig and I'm not necessarily getting paid for it, but it's certainly something I'm passionate about. So think about it in terms of, uh, it could be also establishing a foundation or a nonprofit. Yeah, I think the main the main message that we're uh, looking to communicate is to be intentional about that. Let's not just add side gig to spend more time working, <laughs> but to be intentional that it's fulfilling in one way or the other. Absolutely. Take it away, Amber. Can you go back one slide? I just want to take a picture of it, if you don't mind. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, so that's called the Ikigai. And it's, um, if you want to research on it, you there's a, actually a whole book on Ikigai. It's the Japanese word for reason for being. Mm -hmm. And so the way that they um, guide you through the book to identify what's at the, the center of your reason for being is looking at your passion, your mission, your profession, and your vocation. And one of the keys is that when you look at what you love, what the world needs from you, what you can be paid for and what you're good at, if you hear something repeating itself throughout those different circles, then it's getting you closer to figuring out what it is that that is a part of your purpose. So, cool. all right. So now we're going to talk about the what, what opportunities are out there for me and, you know, just, um, you know, hearing our conversation, I think that this resource that we have for you, you'll find to be very helpful. Uh, we can go on to the next slide, Michelle. Uh, oh, it's it'll be on the one after this, but I'll just speak to this. So, oh, in, oh okay, yeah. So in so just thinking of yourself and and again and being intentional about making the decision of what works best for you. Do you want to align with what already exists? Do you want to align? Is is it a is it um, that you are using uh, Upwork or Fiverr or Uber or Postmates or some of these services that already exist and plugging yourself into that because that's going to be the easiest way for you to test the waters and see if you like what you're doing or are you the type that's actually wired to start from scratch being an entrepreneur a side gig will turn into being an entrepreneur and being an entrepreneur you have to have many skills that you're willing to bring to surface or develop in order to make your business uh, grow and and to become something that turns into more than a side gig, right? Like Michelle always says, the chief bottle washer, what do you say, Michelle? Executive chef and bottle washer. <laughs> right, and so we find ourselves, when you start from scratch, it's more likely that you'll have many more tasks that you have to either do yourself or pay someone to do. And so um, on the next slide, what I wanna offer to you is, um, this list that we're going to drop the link in the chat. Michelle, oh, thank you. We'll drop the link in the chat. This is from Entrepreneur Magazine. It's from this fall. And I thought it was a really good, relevant, timely uh, article about 44 profitable ideas to make extra money on the side. And so I just put a few of them here, 11 of, of that's just a quarter of what they've mentioned. There's so many ideas here, but selling items online. Uh, Joanna and your your knit your knit goods um, your knitwears. Etsy is such a great place, an easy setup. You don't have to build a website or anything like that. You can get started on Etsy. You can sell on eBay. There are all of these on Shopify now. There are all of these platforms that make it very easy to sell your items online without starting your own online store. And so, if you're a creative person, you may find value in that. Deliver for Postmates, super random, but if you're just going, you know, like I, I love when I meet an Uber driver who's just an older person who's like, I'm just saving up retirement funds or I'm just saving to take my wife on a trip. I met a, a the sweetest guy ever in Florida, I think I was, and he was Ubering to take his wife on the trip of a lifetime. And that's why he did it. And he said, I like to meet people and I just like to talk to them and I got extra time on my hands and this is what I do. And so, you know, the Postmates, the Ubers, um, those are opportunities for you to have some mindless time even or time connecting with people that you're just, if, if your value, and it again goes to your value system, if you're just looking to make a little money on the side towards something, then those are good options to consider. 
renting your space on Airbnb. If you're someone who wants to invest in real estate, maybe you start with renting a space on Airbnb. If you're someone who, like for me, I've always wanted to own boutique hotels. I'm looking at uh, small apartments in Detroit, Michigan, because the market's going up. And so I, starting to rent that space on Airbnb is just a step in the direction, just dipping my toe into a side gig that could turn into much more. I'm a huge proponent of Fiverr and Upwork. If you don't know about it, our marketing professionals, our HR professionals. Amy, are you familiar with Upwork? Oh, Amy, Amy girl, please go on right after we hop off of this. <laughs> Upwork.com is an amazing uh, platform that allows you to sell your services to market yourself and to say, this is what I do. People can hire you based on what you do, or you can bid for business that you see out there. Someone can say, I'm looking for X, Y, and Z, and you can apply for the gig. You can put your rates on there. You get reviews on there. Upwork has become uh, a, a huge platform. I know a lot of people who use it and do very well with it. I've hired, I've hired, uh, uh, virtual assistants from Upwork. I've hired project managers. I have an editor from my book that I hired from Upwork. Amazing place. Uh, so if you have services and again, don't want to start that business, that website for your services, Fiverr and Upwork are good. TaskRabbit is another one. Fiverr is more, is sometimes a little less professional and TaskRabbit is not often professional. It's more, um, handy, uh, uh, doing little kind of, um, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, a task rabbit is task, like doing tasks for different businesses and being paid for them. Uh, so these are just places that we wanted to share with you, um, just to spark what, you know, how you may be able to, to start this side gig with something that already exists. Dog walking is a highly profitable side gig. Uh, creating an online course, Mighty Networks, the Teachables, Thinkifics, Kajabis, they're all of these platforms that allow you to create online courses, even recorded courses, and to market them, get them out there, uh, even through the platforms themselves. Babysitting or becoming a nanny, which it looks like Joanna's already doing with her. <laughs> 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 Got a side gig going, Joanna. <laughs> Um, and uh, you know, if you, if you want to open a restaurant, if you love cooking a food truck, food trucks are becoming very popular. They're ways of, uh, that is kind of starting from scratch, but not doing the entire investment and in opening a brick and mortar, but having a food truck, um, is a, is something that you could consider. And lastly, a personal trainer, if you love to work out and exercise and you go, you know, there are a lot of other people that need accountability partners. They need someone to run with them, jog with them, teach them how to do yoga and get in shape. These things don't come naturally to them. And so we're going to share a link to this article with you. There are 33 additional ideas. We only listed 11. So you can see the wealth of what we just shared with you in this slide. There are many more, and hopefully they will take you down a rabbit hole of exploration and curiosity that leads you to getting closer to uh, making your side gig a reality. And I just want to add one thing too. You, you can, in terms of, you don't have to start it from scratch, but you can just kind of leverage what exists. Using the example of a personal trainer, going into um, a franchise or, you know, where you are basically a subcontractor to an existing established business. You don't have to start your own gym and open up a brick and mortar. You basically can hire out your services um, or provide services to an already established entity, either through a franchise or an existing business. So, you know, it depends upon whether you really want to be a, uh, uh, an entrepreneur. Well, you'd be an entrepreneur anyway, or a subcontractor. Yeah. Michelle, if I can just ask you, um, if you are able to, in the last slide, I think there may have been the link to that article at the bottom, if you could cut and paste that into the chat for folks that they want to get. So we are going to share the resources, but I just want to share that with you all uh, if if um, if you want to start exploring. Is it on here? Uh, it was in the, it may be in the notes. If not, it's okay. We can wait till, we just have 10 more minutes left. So we yeah. can do it at yeah. the end. We yeah. just want to make sure folks okay. have the article link. Sure. Okay. Um, so if you're if you're starting from scratch, what you may want to consider are these four things. Starting from scratch, 
you want to do something again that you're passionate about because you want to stay motivated and motivation is a huge part of staying on point to reach our goals that we set and to actually accomplish what we set out to do um and so what are your hobbies looking at what are the things that you love to do that you've already done and weren't paid for um how how much more exciting could it be if that's something that you could monetize so you want to just start to uh, do some reflection on what hobbies do you have what can you be motivated to get up and do every day even if you got to do it for a year or two before you can monetize it um it doesn't always take that long but sometimes these side gigs take a while to get going and you know I, there was a a coach that i worked with that said uh you know you can't expect uh you have a baby business and a baby business needs to be a baby it needs to mature you can't always expect like grown-up profits from a baby business there's the work that has to be put in if you're starting from scratch and really looking to build something um not just plugging and play and going to make money like these other I, I, opportunities that we listed on the last slide a lot of those you can up and you can make money right away you uber you make money right away you know you you uh you do postmates or you do airbnb you can start to make money right away but there's some other side gigs that you may have that may take a while it may take a bit of uh of of planting the seeds and and waiting for for the harvest to come uh, and when we are, again, passionate about what that is, we can often stay motivated through that time. Opportunities. What opportunities exist for you? If this is a great time of year to do a SWOT analysis. We do SWOT analysis for business. Well, we can do them for ourselves as well. What are your strengths and what opportunities exist? What people are within your network that you may already know? Wh whether maybe you're a part of a church and you can start selling at a fair. Maybe you have a, a farmer's market and you can start selling your items at a farmer's market. Maybe there are people who need your babysitting services or you know whatever services that you offer offer and their opportunities that exist that are right around you. You may have resources and connections that are just waiting to be tapped. And maybe you haven't thought about the opportunities that exist truly in those. And so we just want to welcome you to consider these uh, opportunities that could exist around you. Oops, oh, sorry. No, I'm going back. Mm -hmm. Gifts and talents, um, you know, again, we, we talked about it with your hobbies, but your gifts and talents, are you an amazing artist? Are you a great craftsman? Are there things that you take? We often take things for granted because we feel like, oh, everybody, I know how to do this. Well, I've been doing this since I was a kid and everyone knows how to do this. But this is this is not uh, this is not always the case. You may have gifts and talents that are going un underutilized and that maybe that's uh, your opportunity to start from scratch and bring something to life that uh, is a representation of what you're naturally good at. And, and just to underscore that, I'm sorry, but yes. So in terms of gifts and talents, you know, I'm gonna even think about um, Amy, what you've shared. You're an amazing marketer. You know, you know stuff that, you know, people just, it doesn't come to mind. It's just, you know, um, intuitive for you. And that's a gift. That really is a gift and a talent. So again, you know, it doesn't have to be something else that's your gift. It could be, and even the same thing goes for Pam, who was excellent at HR. So her gift um, and her talent for being an HR professional is what she's leveraging. She's kind of narrowed it in. So even with what you are contemplating doing as your side gig, it could involve, may not, but I don't want you to sort of move away from, from marketing because what and how you've been marketing for other companies, even as a president, um, has not been as fulfilling. You can hone in and direct your marketing services specifically to an audience that satisfies you and in a way that um, giving them consulting advice and recommendation that says, yeah, this is where I'm really leveraging what I know about the industry and consumer buying habits, et cetera, et cetera. So um, just want to kind of underscore that. Sorry, Amy, Amber. you may need some marketing services. I'll I, <laughs> drop your, your email in the chat. <laughs> I'm getting- You through stuff on the top of your head. Yeah, yeah, it comes <laughs> Uh, lastly, trends, and forgive me for this typo again here, guys, but trends um, and, and, and noticing the trends, you know, there are these things, uh, for example, 
I, I always recommend that young folks consider doing social media for bigger companies or for even smaller companies because social media, the trend of social media came and brought about the opportunity for these companies that don't really know how to do social media like the kids do. It's like, okay, well, the kids can go out and now get this these jobs. And so that's recognizing a trend and saying, ah, oh, okay, I'm good at that. This trend is big, it's growing, and how can I get on this trend and, and kind of um, maximize the opportunity that exists, taking it from, from uh, just something that I'm watching and observing to something that I'm actually a part of and using my strengths and skills and connections uh, in that space as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the action plan. Um, this is where we want to leave you um, with enough sort of uh, uh, questions perhaps um, or discoveries to then have you take this forward to figure out what's your action plan, right? So what we want you to consider in terms of the what's next is, you know, if you have come anywhere close to identifying what your side gig might be or what you may want to leverage, think about how much time you can dedicate to that side gig, right? Um, and, you know, how do I start and optimize my start, my, my side gig? These are the questions you really kind of want to ask yourself. This is kind of your side gig business plan. Um, how do I promote it, right? How do I bring it to market? How do I communicate this to, you know, my target audience? And very importantly, if in fact you're looking for it to generate revenue and income for you is how do I monetize it, right? Um, using... Uh, the suggestion that Amy shared with, um, um, oh my God, my brain, um, it, it, in terms of the, the meditation, it's there's ways in which, Joanna, you could optimize even what you're doing with your meditation classes and your, and your bowls, uh, your humming bowls, where you could, you know, take it to a whole nother level. Um, and not just kind of host events, there's potentially ways in which you can kind of bring it to a broader audience through social media um, and, you know, maybe have a membership and maybe people sign up um, to kind of follow your blog. I don't know. This is just ways in which you can, because she said, I'm not making a lot of money, but there's potential ways in which you can kind of add elements to it uh, that will do that for you. And what do you need in order to kickstart it? Do I need um, funding money? Uh, do I need resources, manpower? Um, or, you know, is there additional education, training, or certification that I need in order to start it? Um, that's what I did for myself. I was working my nine to five many years ago as a VP of licensing at uh, m, m Mars. And I knew I wanted my side gig to be coaching and I didn't have the courage or the wherewithal to break the golden handcuffs um, and I also knew I needed a certification. So took one year to get that. And then my side gig became my full-time gig. So it's absolutely positively uh, possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's next? Yeah, so, I mean, this is where we wanna leave you with, um, hopefully some of the questions that you have come into this webinar with have been answered, but most importantly, it's with what we've shared with you today what can you do in order to identify, you know, what your side gig is? And if you have identified what your side hustle is, what are your next steps? And look to make 2022 your breakout breakthrough year of launching it so that it's no longer this idea that's been warping and sort of circulating in the back of your mind, but it just kind of sits there um, on pause, you really kind of want to bring it to the next level and demonstrate the confidence and the courage to, to birth it. Yes. So mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. a moment. Thank you for asking that. Can Katrina just ask, how can we donate? You can donate and watch replays through the link that I just shared with you. Um, and so it is just about a minute to one thirty. I just want to share a couple important things before we go. Um, one, I dropped a link to QWC WellZone in the chat. It's a membership platform that I'm starting. It's still uh, in its infant stages, but there's a um, course, an on-demand course that Michelle and I did called BAM, and it's how to start and grow your business. 
And I think Michelle would agree with me in saying that we'd be willing to offer that to you guys just to go through and to, um, there's four recorded videos. I think it's about four hours of content to give us your feedback on it. And um, as we go to, uh, to share it more publicly next year, uh, and so if you're interested in that, you can have, you can join the QWC well zone. And once I see you joined, I'll give you access to BAM uh, and it's the business accelerator mastermind. Uh, if, and when we go live with it next year, it'll be something that is accompanied with live interaction. It's not just the on-demand videos, but just want to offer that to a resource and let you know, it'd be valuable for us to know what you think of it. Um, if that's something that you choose to go through, um, Michelle, do you want to share? Any yeah, other? no, I'm just going to say that, that um, you know, Amber and I, we, we were kind of strategizing on what we want to do, what's all, what is our next step. And, you know, we're looking to, for 2022, maybe move in a different direction. And instead of just having such a wide variety of topics and themes to discuss, but really kind of hone in on supporting potentially women, um, you know, to enhance their business as entrepreneurs. Um, so, you know, we're going to be putting our heads together, uh, but we want you to stay tuned. You're on our mailing list and, uh, you know, we're going to be changing somewhat of the direction of what we do, but trust me, it will still be just as beneficial and as juicy as what we've been doing for the last year and a half. Yeah. So you may not see a, a purpose-driven professional lunch and learn in January, but you will hear from us and, and we'll be sharing with you what's next. So... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ladies, so much. Thank oh, you. Oh, you're welcome, Joanna. Thank you. Um, oh, Sheila, thank you. Sheila says this was certainly helpful and inspiring. Takes the fear out of getting started. And right, the clarity, clarity. Sometimes we make things a lot scarier than they have to be. So thank you mm -hmm. all for sharing your resources and your stories as well, because your story is our story, is her story and her story and her story. And so, you know, I think we all poured into each other. All right, ladies, this is our last session of the year for sure. Uh, so we wish you uh, a very uh, fulfilling uh, next uh, new year and uh, a healing and relaxing rest of the year and just sending you lots of love and light on your path and whatever direction life may take you. So thank you so much for joining and supporting us. Thank you, guys. Thanks, you guys. Bye-bye. You have a great day. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thanks, it was great.